Tonight we have Let's Talk About Sex with Dr. Erica Schwartz, foremost specialist in hormones. She's written a book, The Hormone um, Guide, and also The Intimacy book, which is the one we're going to talk about tonight. And she never believes there's a norm. She's treated over 50 thousand women in her very long career and we're going to discuss tonight all aspects of intimacy and how hormones and intimacy are very closely related whatever age you are however you feel in the bedroom and just the level of intimacy you have with the closest person in your life or wish to have with somebody we're up for discussing everything and anything tonight let's talk about sex baby let's talk about you and me very nice to see you again and i'm sure viewers on trini tv very happy to see you. So um, when I discuss with you, Erica, what other things we could talk about, um, we, you know, sex is a difficult discussion. I find it a difficult discussion as a perennially British woman, but I think women generally can find... Wait, wait, wait. wait. What's about the perennial British Well, I, I think <laughs> stiff upper lip British women, I don't know. I, but I think, first of all, Erica, let's start with why did you write the book, The Intimacy Solution? Because people don't understand sex. They don't understand the connection between sex and intimacy. And it's a big mess. And right now with the coronavirus thing, it's an even bigger mess because what I did, and I was telling you before, is I did an informal poll yesterday and today to about 150 women in the various ages, like from maybe early 20s to 70s. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I asked them, how's your sex life? Yeah. How's your relationship? And yeah. you can imagine what the answers were. It's going to blow your mind. Okay, tell us. So interesting, it doesn't matter about age. Age had nothing to do with anything. Some people, the people who were scared, some of them had more sex because they were scared. Mm -hmm. some people, scared, scared of what, Erica? Scared of what's happening? Just of the craziness and the being isolated. Yeah. And what's going to happen next? And nobody knows when the stupidity is going to end. And nobody's telling us the truth. And it's a disaster. And we're not getting the information we need. But tonight is about intimacy. Tonight is about information we're going to give you that you need that's going to help your sex life get better. Fantastic. Anyway. <laughs> so um, anyway, so the interesting thing was that it didn't matter about age. It mattered about the state of mind. And in the book, The Intimacy Solution, I came to the same conclusion. After listening to my patients talk about sex, intimacy, how they get together, what is it all about? And the reality is that nothing has changed. And that's the good thing because, you know, we were talking about new normal, 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 normal. Where has it gone? Well, it hasn't gone anywhere. It's here. Everybody's in exactly the same place. If you're interested in sex, you're going to have a lot of sex. If you're not interested in sex, this is just going to give you an opportunity not to have sex. And sex gets better as you get older. You'll be happy to know when you get to I mean, I have to agree <laughs> with that. I, as I feel more confident as a woman, that affects me in every aspect of my life. For it sure. Is, it, For it, sure. Because you know what? If we are sexual, we feel better. We look younger. We're more passionate about our lives. And we do better, you know? It's yeah. very interesting that you know maybe it's a cultural thing maybe 50 years from now it won't be the same but if you go back it's been like that for a long time and okay it is yeah i agree okay i, I want to ask you something and i i know lucy we've got questions as well but i want to ask you this if there's some people watching now and they're feeling that maybe you know, because of Corona, there is not an opportunity. So let's say somebody is in a relationship and I'm sure there's a few women watching in this, in this situation that maybe they haven't been having great sexual relationships yeah. with their partner. And they are now thinking to themselves, I love to resolve this. I'd love to feel that we can get through this. So what kind of advice can you give women in that situation? Be honest. Open your mouth and say what you feel. Stop right. worrying. Stop yeah. worrying that what you're saying is not going to be acceptable or whatever. Just be honest. Because honesty creates a completely different setup. And be kind. Be kind yeah. to each other. Be kind to people. Because it's, you know, the thing is, you know, you're British. So it's like you think about, you know, the stiff upper lip. I'm not going to say anything. 
I'm going not to everyone, but maybe there's a harder ability for some women right. to get their needs met. You know, right. I think there are and women who are afraid, and they're, it's out yeah. of fear. And the thing is that fear is the most horrible of all emotions because it destroys everything. So this is the thing. So one of the the people that I polled, which is really funny, she's 35, really wonderful girl. I really love her. Um, she told me that they were they were staying at her in-laws because they got out of New York City and that she and her husband were actually, when I sent her the poll and then she responded and she said, well, actually that's why we're leaving my in-laws because we're not having enough sex. She said, we're going, they, were, they went to Virginia. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. That they, they needed to get out. And it was so interesting because here is a 35 year old who's honest. It was like, that's why we have to leave. It's not like they're doing anything wrong. It's just that we feel better, more connected. I know that I enjoy intimacy and I enjoy sex. I, I enjoy them both and, and they, are, they are the same and they're also different. Right. Right. So um, one doesn't preclude the other, but when, the, when, 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 the, when it's, it's the same thing, to me, it's the best. Totally. But that's something that occurs over time. Yeah. That occurs over time. And so what happens is that at the beginning, it's all sex. And then you actually develop a relationship and that relationship becomes more important than its ingredients, its parts. So yeah. sexuality is only one of the pieces of the relationship. Now, the thing is that you have to talk because if you're not talking, you don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. Because most men will just yes you to death and say fine or just tune out what you're saying if it doesn't sound like the, what they want to hear. So this is the thing. It's about what women want. I mean, honestly, if there's anybody who has been taking care of women her whole life and is a supporter and protector of women, it's me. I have totally, my whole career has yeah. been dedicated have, to yeah. helping m women empowered, being empowered and actually making decisions that will improve their lives. Yeah. But they have to come clean and be honest. Women are not honest. Women are saying what they think somebody else wants to hear. Women will say, oh, my marriage is wonderful. I've been married for 40 years. Things are wonderful. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Many but also maybe I think for some women, Erica, the goalposts change. And I don't say that's necessarily a good or bad thing. I don't want to judge it. And for someone, it might, some women, it might be that they're going for the crumbs on the table. And for other women, their goalposts are changing equally with their partner. So I think when you say all women, it's some women, you know, it's but some everybody, women. Everybody, like you started it by saying that, that everything, everyone's different. Yeah. Everybody's normal is different. And I think yeah. that that's the most important thing. Let's get down to nitty gritty so let's say you're a woman and you feel you're still wanting to be intimate and you're with your partner and it's just not happening what would you advise a woman i mean it depends so much on the characters of each of the people but general stuff just i'd love some practical help for women out there who are listening if they're in this situation well first of all with let's talk hormones for one second yeah as women go into menopause and they lose their hormones, they lose their desire for sex. Yeah. And so, and also raising kids is not exactly a sexually in, 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 enticing and inducing thing because you have teenagers around, children around, you're not gonna have time. Yeah. So it's very easy, it's easy for women to lose sexuality. And yet, mm -hmm. it's sexuality that started the relationship, and yeah. it's sexuality that defines us as women that stay sexy for life yeah. so hormones are important yeah. and realize what's going on so what's what's the solution the solution is to talk the solution is to cuddle the solution is to touch each other this date night stuff is real bullshit as far as i'm concerned because you're going out to dinner you're not exactly making out i think <laughs> it's more important than you make out i think it's more important that you wait for the kids to go to sleep or you go to a hotel or you have the grandparents or somebody or babysit or something and go and make out and start maintaining the heat, the excitement that kept you to begin with.
connected to the partner. And then as you get older and the kids leave the house, you're not going to look at a stranger. You're going to look at the body you want to have sex with, you want to cuddle with, you want to share your life with. And it happens. You can do it. It's not just about having hormones. It's about balancing what matters in life by talking about it and by doing the things that keep you interested and going. Let's talk dryness, Erica. Let's, for all the men who are on now, you might want to get off. But many women do experience dryness, which is an issue. Well, it's the lack of hormones and also the lack of use. If you're not having sex, you're going to get dry. If you're not <laughs> masturbating, you're going to get dry. If you're not keeping your vagina moist, you're going to get dry. So you know what? Get your hormones in balance and you don't have to have sex with your partner if that's so offensive and that makes you feel like I'm saying something wrong. Then do it yourself. But then you're not going to get dry and your vagina will continue giving you pleasure. It's okay. So you're saying that if we... So are you saying that hormones aren't the only thing that reduce um, a good vagina? Well, actually, it's a combination. It's hormones and what goes on between your ears because look what you have here. It's what goes on between your ears the, the, defines if you're interested in having sex or not. Defines what the truth that goes on happens. And guess what? It's between your ears that will moisturize your vagina. Okay. Somebody's saying, um, and this is so true, what about stressed out, depressed men who lose their libido? I think there are a lot of women, Erica, yeah. who are with men totally. who are really right. depressed, you know? And I think that, oh. you know, I think this is interesting. I think women can be depressed right. and they'll still have sex because they know that, because, you know, because we attach so much more to sex than just sex. Whereas I think when men are very depressed, they find it much harder, you know? Because you know much what? harder. Women can passively accept it. Men yeah. have to have an erection. So what have... do you do if you're in a relationship? This is probably one that's been going on for a, a while, Erica, and you feel that you as a woman, you're like there for it, want to have sex with your partner, and he is feeling depressed and flat. What can you do to help him? Tell him how much you love him, caress him, give him compliments, tell him how wonderful he is, tell him of the good times, show him how you can give him love because he will respond. I have never in 40 years met a man who didn't respond to love and kindness. Uh, I mean, it's a very hard discussion, this, and I think that- Go ahead, keep on doing it because you know what? You know, some, I saw something that passed that it said that I was arrogant. And I have to tell you, I take a big, like, ex, like, offense to saying that I'm arrogant because the last thing I am is arrogant. I'm here to help. The only yeah. reason I'm doing this is to help. The only yeah. thing I have done for 40 years is helped. Yeah. My goal is to be a contributor to my, make life better for women and men and to improve our state. So to yeah. say that I'm arrogant, you're just not listening, clearly. Do you think that yes. if you are a woman yeah. um, who is in midlife, and a lot of my audience are all different ages, but I'm just addressing the women in midlife, um, and midlife to me is 50, by the way, because I think we should all live to 100 if we look after ourselves. Um, but, but if you are in that situation and you have just, you know, maybe some women have stopped having sex much. Do you think that, and I, I know what you're gonna say, but I want you to really give women an inspiration as to why they shouldn't go down this path, that you just sort of think, well, this is the inevitable thing and we won't have sex so much and we won't do this. Why should women, in a way, Erica, because we talked on Friday about going on to HRT and hormones and things, why should we try and halt time or halt the natural, physical, condition of our body to just go through these different stages you know what you have a perfect example with corona it's about prevention you can prevent disease and corona is a perfect example of not having prevented not focusing on prevention focusing on diagnosing disease and treating it with medication you know what it's about preventing we're alive for so long we're all going to die in the end this is the thing 
If you can keep your life in balance, you can passionately enjoy life and contribute, then you actually will be fine. There is no reason not to prevent disease, not to prevent ourselves from getting vict becoming victims of diseases. And as we get older and we lose our hormones, we start getting diseases of aging. And diseases of aging are all preventable. There's many women on here still say, libido, help me with my libido. Le Erica, what do I take? What do I do? I want to have a great sex life. I think a lot of women tuned in thinking, Erica, can you help me have a great sex life? I'm not having one and I want to. So let's just go on to that now, give some solutions to those women still, we've got a very active audience actually, exactly the same. So I think there's new women coming on and other women leaving. So Erica, your yeah. midlife, you're feeling a little bit dried out and you want to have that sex life and you want to feel fantastic. And uh, you know, I know what I do, but you, you say what, what you suggest as well. Well, you have a few things to look at. Okay. Be honest with yourself, so look at yourself. If you're perimenopausal, if you're losing your hormones, by all means, get your hormones in balance. Find a doctor who knows about bioidentical hormones, who will treat you and will get you back in hormone balance. Yep. Then look at the relationship. If you're in a stale relationship, you're not gonna be turned on by that relationship. You yep. have to be turned on by your pa partner. If your partner doesn't turn you on, you can take all the medication in the world, you can take all the hormones in the world, and nothing will happen. But when your hormones are in balance, you will have interest in sex. And that means you can actually self-please yourself. You can start <laughs> masturbating, which is a very important thing. Men spend their lives masturbating. What about women? women masturbate too. There's nothing wrong with it. And there's more and more of that going on. And I tell you in our offices, like people ask me to order like, you know, <laughs> things for them to masturbate with because they're ashamed if they're older, not the young ones, because the yeah. young ones all are fine. Yeah. They'll go to a you know, romantic depot and just buy. Yeah. <laughs> But older women are embarrassed and they don't know their bodies. That's the other thing. Women need to know their bodies better than men. Men somehow know our bodies better than we know our bodies. Explore, yeah. find out what pleases you, find out what feels good. You will wake up that like sleeping giant, which is your sexuality. Dr. Erica, there's a few people on here. We're getting on subject now that people are calming down because they really want to know the answers. So there's a lady saying, I can't have HRT because I have secondary cancer and I have no libido. What can I, what can I, what can I do to help? Actually, if your cancer is not active, you can take hormones because hormones, especially testosterone, diminish and decrease the incidence of cancer and the risk of cancer. So there's a lot for you to learn about how you can help yourself balancing your hormones that will increase your sexuality, your drive. The other thing is, you know, there is no real medication. They will sell your bill of goods. You can have marketing out the wazoo. There's always something new that will make you get turned on. It yeah. doesn't matter. We don't have that. Because unlike men, we don't need to increase the blood supply to the vagina beyond just regular blood supply in order to have an erection. <clears throat> but there are a lot of things we could do. There's a machine, it's called Emcella, which is like a throne, we have that. And oh, what is, what is Emcella? Tell us, what is this machine? So Emcella is a machine that sends electromagnetic pulses. You just sit there all dressed up, you don't get undressed. Yeah. And it sends electromagnetic pulses into your vagina and it improves the blood supply to the pelvis. So it increases libido because it's yeah. the light blood supply, right? Now, men use it and it is FDA approved in the United States for incontinence. And as women get older, because they've exercised a lot or they had a lot of kids, what they do is the pelvic floor starts weakening. And the pelvic floor starts weakening, you'll pee a drop or two when you're jumping around or running or if you have to go to the bathroom. This machine, by improving blood flow to the pelvic floor, decreases the chances of you ever having to 
run to the bathroom and dropping a drop or two of urine, but it also increases the interest and the libido. So okay. there's, there's a lot of stuff. Then there are all these lasers that people are using for vaginal rejuvenation, which I'm not being arrogant, but yeah. I don't work. What they do is they're painful and they don't really improve the lining of the vagina. So you want to try to look at them cella as the main thing and have okay. your hormones balanced and then make sure that you're turned on by the person you want to have sex with. Can I ask you something, Erica? Because this is like getting so intimate, all right? But I'm just going to get really intimate. Anything. How many women here lie that they've had an orgasm when they haven't? Uh -huh. You know, just, I Thank just want, I want to ask this big question because I think a fundamental difference in a number of women compared to men is a man comes, you know, he's come, that's it's it. Done. Okay. And a woman for all different reasons can either come because she's tired and she just wants to finish it. She can pretend to come because she doesn't know how to come or she is kind of scared to get her needs met. Do you know what I mean? She's scared to say, yes. actually, the way you've made love to me for 10 years is, is, is actually not, right. you know, not making me right. come. So, so it's like, it's a, that's a really difficult conversation to have in the bedroom for some women. But I, I do believe if you, you know, when you say about having an honest conversation, I do believe if you can say, you know, hey, can you do it this way? Because I'd like to try, you know, if you can vocalize. So, so you're feeling as great as the other person in the room. I think that there are quite a few women who really, one wants to say, just, just say, you know, what you'd like. I think exactly. that's something some women find difficult to do. What about being honest about how you feel? And women don't have orgasms. I have women in the practice who have never had an orgasm. Now, if yeah. they're 20, I will stop that dead in its track. Do you I mean they've never had an internal it. orgasm, Erica? What? Or do you, mean, do you mean they've never had an internal orgasm, but they've just masturbated? I always call it masturbation. masturbation. If you tell them to masturbate, that's right. And then you say, well, do you, can you have an orgasm when you masturbate? And yeah. if the answer is yes, then the guy's not pleasing you. Yeah. Then, the guy, then you're not communicating correctly. Yeah. Not having a relationship where it's a give and take. You're just basically a receptacle for him to have an orgasm. Well, yeah. you can masturbate too. You know? Because I think it is so important to really fully enjoy sex. Yes. And I think that it's, it's you know, I feel for women if they, and I have in my past been in a situation, you know, where I have felt that I just, you know, I couldn't get my needs met and I didn't vocalize it. And I know how painful that has been, Erica, and I know I would never do that again, you know, because it's like. Yeah, yeah. Thank God, because you know what? It's again about life is short. Why not yeah. be honest? And not, why not get and give the most we can? Yeah. Why not? Somebody why not? is saying here, dryness is not caused by lack of use, okay? So... Well, yeah, dryness is partially caused by lack of use. What but, else is it caused by, Erica, though? Because it is not just that. It's by lack of hormones. It's when your hormone imbalance, when, when you don't have enough estrogen and testosterone, you will get dry. Mm -hmm. And the, the other thing is that, you know, to this day, and there's been research on sexuality for the past hundred years, and not one of the researchers has ever been able to come up with a definition of what will cause a woman to get turned on versus not. So I think that from where I sit, where I listen to patients all day long, there is the sexuality that comes between your ears. So you have to be turned on to that person's intelligence, his look, his whatever, his yeah. hormones, his smell, his anything, right? The way he, he eats, whatever. There's so many things, right? Yeah. Then there is the hormones that if you're losing your hormones, you're not going to really be interested in sex. Then there is the relationship and the relationship that becomes stale. And what you were saying before is so important because when a relationship becomes stale and you're not getting needs physical emotional fulfilled 
you're not going it's not going to work and you're better off alone than being in a relationship that doesn't give you and that you that doesn't take out of you you can't shine your light on someone who doesn't love you who's not giving you love yeah and i think also there is that thing that you have to inhale the love you feel for somebody i think for a woman that's so important that you have to kind of cherish the physicality of them or the things that charm you about that person you know because i think that that feeds a woman's sense of sexuality yes and and i know that you know those are the most important things to feel to to stimulate yourself as well as all the other things you might be doing so you know whether you're taking hrt or you take a lubricant or you masturbate when you're not with the person to kind of just keep that whole sense of um sexuality somebody saying you're truly read the positives too i think i think there's a lot of conversation going on um uh, lucy i just want to say are there any other questions you think cuz i know you're hanging on in there lucy's on the other phone that you feel we should be discussing because you're also reading the comments more than us um yeah there's a few women that have had hysterectomies and have lost their libido after after that can we talk about that erica ladies who have lost had hysterectomies and they've lost their libido as a result of that that had hysterectomies yeah okay. and now they have a lack of libido can you yeah, give them some advice it would be nice if the conventional medical establishment and the gynecologist would tell you is that the moment you have a hysterectomy with or without an oophorectomy meaning your ovaries you yeah. will lose your libido you will go into menopause your yeah. hormone production will decrease to it will come to a halt and women will go into a horrible place which is complete loss of libido and you know what you're saying which is so important is that we define ourselves by our sexuality yeah you know, we may dress for each other because we like how the other one dresses and makes us feel better but at the end of the day it's about our sexuality it's about the way we feel as women because women just like men define themselves by how attractive they feel to the other sex to to the other well, i think it's 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 I think it's more than that actually Erica because I think if you feel good about yourself and right. to me this is about confidence if you feel good about yourself and you feel on all the levels that you judge yourself as a woman all right mm -hmm. that you feel you're delivering to yourself so you know you're being honest in your relationship you're giving it all you know you're giving it as a mom you're you're feeling you're respecting your body you know you're you're honoring your body in every way you know i think women who feel uncomfortable physically in their body and they feel there's this thing in you know that the person sitting on their shoulder giving them real down messages of course to get out of that requires lots of help lots of confidence building whether it's just you know respecting your body feeling good about yourself letting letting your girlfriends love you and lift you up you know these are really important things that make us also a confident woman for everything we want to do i don't think it's just like you have good sex and then everything works out i don't think that's what you're saying either but do you know <laughs> what i mean it's all these other things go to make us ah, this fabulous okay. woman because then you exude a fucking energy erica and at the end I of the day that's for me what i was saying to you it's about exuding that women have lights to shine and yeah. the way you're going to shine your light is if you feel good about yourself and yeah. the way you feel good about yourself is if you're appreciated and if you have the confidence to kind of say okay this is not appreciating me i'm going to move on and then you're going to have the confidence to say this is appreciating me so i'm going to give it more of me i'm going to shine more of me onto this person and this person will do well so you're right i agree with you i think it's a very complex thing which is why the intimacy solution was about intimacy and sexuality yeah. and how they meld when they do and how they don't when they don't but i think it becomes really important to understand that there's so many variables that it's like a puzzle there's millions of pieces to the puzzle and the more pieces you put together the more you'll realize that what the puzzle looks like and the puzzle is really your life 
So yeah. I think it becomes really important to be honest and be and respect your life literally. Yeah, I mean, I I think that um, a lot of women are uh, now being very animated by the conversation. I think um, we discussed on Friday, Erica, the importance that we both agreed on of having a program of some replacements of hormones. And I think we both totally agree that it's not something, I know it's not something I'm gonna give up because I don't believe that I want to, I don't want my life to, you know, Why just peter out. I want to feel that energy until yes. I got found dead at 100. So right. for women who are saying, you know, please talk about breast cancer and no HRT, I've got a lot of women, and we discussed it on Friday, but it's something that in, in maybe generalistic medicine in England, Erica, but you're giving your opinion here, but Erica is a foremost hormone specialist in the US, that I think a lot of women here are told if they've had breast cancer, they can't do HRT. And, and it's, I, I just want you to talk about that for a minute because- um, scientifically proven, actually, women who are- in the United States, they're coming around, but I think they're coming around in, in the UK too. Um, there is no scientific data to support the fact that there is any connection between taking HRT and then having breast cancer. The thing is that testosterone protects against breast cancer. Then there is a lot of ways in which you can balance hormones to maintain your health. You know, as you get older, it's not just about breast cancer. It's about Alzheimer's. Yeah. It's about osteoporosis. Yeah. It's about diabetes. It's about obesity. It's about a lot of issues. And I think that if you put them into perspective with hormones, you will prevent these diseases. Without hormones, you will just get old and sick. And we don't want to get old and sick. We want to stay healthy. Yeah. So because if you have of breast cancer, then... That's okay. Yeah. If the cancer is not active. Take the hormones. Yeah. the Diet, exercise, lifestyle, stress management. Yeah. Somebody uh, said, Erica, because I just yeah. want you to reinforce this. There's a comment here, and this is interesting. Some shipperism. People can be terrified of aging, and there's no stopping time. I think that your point, so which I really hear from you, is that this is not about hey, I don't want to grow old. This is like I want to stay healthy, and things like HRT can keep my body healthy so that those diseases that kill us maybe don't come calling so early. Right, so the risk of the diseases of aging, like osteoporosis, arthritis, Alzheimer's, heart disease, all of uh, cancer, all of these diseases, the risk of it increases with aging. Yeah. Right? Now, hormones mitigate some of that, some of that increase in risk. But also our lifestyles, diet, exercise, lifestyle, stress management, sleep, and how we behave in relationships, how you mm -hmm. feel about yourself, which yeah. is that was so important was confidence. Yeah. And women have been basically less confident than men. Mm -hmm. And now we are starting to get the confidence. And the more confidence we have, the better we will do. Mm. Um. I, I love what you say, I have to say. Um, I just, I want to say here, there's one woman saying, why, why are we so focused so much on men? I think it's just because we're talking about relationships. So whether it's with a woman well, or whatever, just it's just, you know, that's what relationships generally involve another person, whether it's male or female. Um, uh, there was one other thing that, sorry, somebody just said, um, sometimes, this is a lady here, because I want to help her, like, so Rachel. Sometimes when I'm overwhelmed, I don't feel like being loving lovely and caring for my husband is there something i can do to i think she's saying to to lift my mood or to help my mood i think um, the first thing to do is start being kind to yourself forget about your husband mm -hmm. let's be kind to yourself the first thing to do is to see if you're not w interested in being loving to your husband see of how you feel towards yourself do you love yourself do you accept yourself for what you are and how you are? Do you realize that you're normal and what's going on in your life is just a moment in time when you don't feel your best and that moment in time will pass? And maybe doing something that makes you feel good about yourself will eventually open the door for you to feel kind and loving to your husband. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's somebody saying here, Julia, the excitement I get in a relationship is mostly when I feel cherished and loved. It comes from the emotional side 
um, for me. And then I feel in the mood, not just for me, but for him, which is so true. Um, I, what if, a lot of people are saying, Erica, what if yeah. I can't take hormones? So there's some, there must be some people like Booth Cockapoo, who's one of my biggest lovely ladies who watches a lot, saying not everyone can take HRT. So, but that's what, not, wait, wait, wait. Everybody can. It's just different kinds of HRT. There are different doses of HRT. There are different combinations of HRT. Everybody can. You just need to find the right doctor, like the same, the right relationship. Yeah that will give you what works for you, that will listen to you, and then understanding you will create the correct combination that will work for you. So what, if you could just describe that, because I know this is, we're talking about sex tonight, but I think having the right balance of hormones really helps your intimacy. We, we've established that, Erica. So could you describe then for us, because it might be that a woman wants to, uh, let's say the doctor, a general practitioner who's not really that vested, says, oh, you can't take HRT. And then a woman is thinking, well, could I go back to him and say, can I take this? So what is the, like, in your opinion, if you've got somebody who's maybe suffered from some illnesses where HRT is off the table, when you talk about alternatives, you're talking about um, biodynamic or what are you talking about? I mean, bi bio Bioidentical. I always call it biodynamic, don't I? I Bioidentical. So change the name to biodynamic. We so should. So could you explain to um, ladies, um, and also another question which comes up a lot, is how do I know if my hormones are imbalanced? This is the thing. That, how do you know that they are, are in, in uh, unbalanced? Yeah, not in, not in balance. Not in, yeah. Well, you don't sleep well, you gain weight, your mood is irritable, you get hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia, you you have itchiness, you have allergies that you never had, your hair is thinning. There are all these symptoms that, have, that you start looking to the neurologist or the endocrinologist for. The truth is, it's just your hormones are leaving you. So those are symptoms of hormone imbalance. Lack of libido, yeah. symptom of hormone imbalance. So yeah. there are a lot of symptoms. But the thing is that once you start experiencing them, and we all do, whether it is after we had a baby that we have symptoms of hormones. So do people have them that young? Because I think yeah. there might be people watching who might think, oh, that's when I hit menopause, but they're no, getting a few. Nothing to do with menopause. Women, who, once they have babies, the IVF is a huge, huge cause of hormonal imbalance. Yeah. If you're gonna have babies, but then after that, your hormones are gonna be shot. So can you only get bioidentical hormones privately in the UK? I have to say, no, I think, don't... I don't know, Erica, yet, if you can get them on the National Health. Oh, yes, you can. It's called Estragel. Estragel, okay. Estragel, bioidentical estradiol. Testosterone has not been approved outside, okay. I mean, anywhere, really, for um, the use of, you know, for, for women. It's just yeah. approved. In. So there are a lot of doctors who prescribe it, and it works really well. Progesterone is a, is approved in the in the UK, so you can get it. You just need the right doctor to okay. hear, to understand, and work with you. Okay, so you can have. I know because I've had this done when I first met you. Is had my hormones tested, and I had. You know, I remember I had zero testosterone when I met you. Right. I had a right. tiny bit of progesterone, and I had hardly any estrogen. So, you know, I, for me, I was getting weird spots and I was feeling very tired and, and flat and low. I mean, I know all those symptoms and I did go into, um, started having those symptoms age 44, 45. Um, so what are the, um, if you're lacking, I just want to ask you this, I've never asked you this, Erica, but let's say you're lacking just estrogen. What are the symptoms you would see? Well, you know what, the thing is that, they work together. So it's not like one of them takes the lead. Okay. So it's a matter of putting them together it's like an orchestra. So you have to have all the pieces together. And sleep is one of the things that I didn't mention that sleep is such a horrible thing because I feel it's like how mother nature takes us out yeah. that we stop sleeping yeah. and hormones will help you sleep, but also meditating, listening to calming music, mm -hmm. you know, not drinking at night. Yeah. 
also not exercising at night all yeah. these things that you're doing can help you sleep better too uh -huh. and it's not just the hormones it's the diet has to be changed because yeah. we can't we can't detoxify the same way we did when we were 20 uh -huh. so i think that it's about adjusting your life to do it more and more kindly towards yourself we're back on the hormones aren't we <laughs> <laughs> we're back yeah. on, it always leads back to the bloody hormones but oh, you know, always I mean, always sleep to me is you know Huge. going back to sex if you feel you're not getting enough sleep and you're panicking the last thing you want to do slightly is have sex because i know yeah. after sex i know after, right i mean i think this is the thing of men and women difference okay i think after sex men are like so happy and they they just that like they sleeping. crash right. i have sex and i just want to go and build a house me too so <laughs> me up so much I that's a so, thing that's a difference between us and them yes yeah. it's so yes. funny that i, I the, do the diet feel. i recommend is a diet that is low that's alkaline that is really because i was reading somebody who was asking so you want to be alkaline and actually i don't want to bring corona back in but alkalinity is important <laughs> alkalizing is Alkaline i mean i want to have eating. a whole can we right, do a dark, conversation next time? Because I've dark, got leafy green vegetables and no dairy. Get rid of dairy as you get older because it makes you really sick. And alcohol limited as much as possible and caffeine too. I hate to say that. I know. But but you're taking I don't know how you do it. No chocolate at night, but I don't know. Maybe you you see, some, some people, like if my sister was watching this, my lovely sister, she, we had a conversation today and she was like, she was like, Trini, there's some things I just won't forego, you know? Well, that's right. And she'll you die very happy, okay. my sister. But okay. I, yeah. And I think that uh, when I started talking a little bit last week, Eric, about sugar and how I, apart from the last three days, I've had the halo bar, the little dark chocolate bar. But nice. generally, <laughs> I've taken refined sugars out of my life um, for three weeks. And... The difference I felt in my body Huge. and the right. difference I felt in my brain and my alertness and the lack of inflammation. So that when I eat, I actually had some chocolate Nutella biscuits yesterday. We were playing yeah. a board game and yeah. I had like five because I, and they taste, and I lay in bed afterwards and I felt my ankles swell. I literally yeah. felt that fucking yeah. inflammation just come yeah. and go, whoa. Yeah, that's why alkalinity helps. But this is the interesting thing. You know, people will say what you said, which is so true. I won't forego whatever. Yeah. But this is the thing. What I say is don't forego it. Just stop it for three, four days. See how you feel yeah. and start it again. And interestingly enough, people start decreasing the frequency of doing the insulting agent because they feel better without it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I'll share what I'm eating on another one. Um, why is dairy bad when you get older, Erica? Somebody's asking. That's a good question. It's because we're not able to process it anymore because we don't have, you know, the, lact the lactate, the uh, enzymes anymore, and it becomes yeah. toxic. So then as it becomes toxic, our liver becomes really bloated from it, and it becomes a big problem. So you're better off giving up. My husband said to me the other day, he said, what do you mean I can, because now he's actually dairy-free. <laughs> so he said to me, what do you mean I can't have, uh, you know, my, what is he like? He likes, he's British, so he likes whatever, some Stilton, whatever it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, oh, cheddar, he said. I love the fact you have he's a British like, cheddar, husband. Cheddar. I didn't so, know you had a British husband, Erica. Well, see that? There's always secrets between us. We got to get rid of them. <laughs> okay. Somebody's saying, what no dairy osteoporosis is real. Okay, so osteoporosis, you're not going to correct osteoporosis with dairy. You're going to uh, correct osteoporosis with high-impact exercises. I mean, high, like, strain, it's stress. Well, what am I trying to say? Low well, impact weights exercise. With weights, right, low-impact weights. That's how you do it. Then you, have, you take magnesium and calcium supplementation, but low. But guess what? Hormones, testosterone protects you from osteoporosis. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I do um, consult with people who are not in the USA. Obviously, Trini. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I, yeah. Actually, and I do come to to London. You come to London, yeah. I mean, um, now I can't, but 
I when you come back, back, when you come back, there'll be a queue. There'll be a queue of people who want to be nice to you. <laughs> and there'll be a queue of people who are saying, help me. And there will be an equal queue. And I, can I just say, Erica, I loved our conversation tonight. It opened up a lot of thoughts. What do you think, Lucy? Because Lucy's been listening to everything. What are you thinking? I'm fascinated. <laughs> <laughs> you go off and have a lovely evening. I'm going to go you to too. bed now. You should. You look gorgeous. And, um, and I want to say to the Australians. Next the Australians do. Oh, look at you, fantastic. Love is the drug. Love is the drug. Dr. Erica's office is on Fifth Avenue, just opposite, the, just up by the Prada building, because I know it well, <laughs> uh, called Evolve Science. And, and we do and we do a lot of remote, you know, telephone consultations. We have a lot of patients in England and New Zealand and yeah. Australia everywhere. Yeah, you do. And lots We're of people, happy. Trinity Tribe Southwest, have been listening avidly and supporting your conversation, um, Dr. Erica. So I just thank you very much, everybody who tuned in. Good night.